Hi, this is Ofori, the digital reader. And I see I had a couple new people, so I just wanted to mention that at the beginning of every month, I always talk about all the ebook and book reading stuff I did the previous month. So I talk about um, the books I read, and I talk about the books I bought, and this month I'm also going to talk about all the free books that I picked up because last month I signed up for a book bub and they had a ton of uh, books and a good portion of them almost every day I was getting an offer for a free book. I didn't take up all the offers because I really only take even for free books books that I'm interested in and also I picked up a free book from Amazon at the beginning of every month Amazon has about six books that they showcase and you can pick up to two of them for free once again most of the time they're not in my wheelhouse but every now and then I'll pick up one and this month I picked up one so I'm gonna start with the books I picked up free then talk about the books I bought which um, is three uh, the way I because I want to go into my back catalog of books because I have over 1500 ebooks that I haven't read I can came up I kind of came up with a system where I allow myself to buy half as many books as I read the previous month so for example in September I read six books which means that this that I was able to buy three books this month so it's going to be three books I bought, uh, the books I got for free, and also um, talking about the six books that I read this month. And when I talk about books I read, I really kind of talk about brief impressions of them and I kind of give a rating of them. I'm not a big fan of giving in-depth book reviews because I, kind of, I feel like they kind of spoil the surprise. Uh, if you want to know exactly how I feel about that, you can uh, check out the link up there. I did a video on why I don't give in-depth book reviews, but generally I give my overall impressions, a brief overall of the story, and kind of briefly how I felt about the book. I feel like if you see a book that I rate four or five stars and you pick it up and you like it, then there's a good chance that you and I have similar tastes in books, and that's what I really go off of with other booktubers. I hope you go off of that. So um, let's get started. I'm going to start out with the books I picked up in September for free um, on BookBub and on uh, Amazon First Reads. So I'm going to start out with the books that I got for free off of BookBub. Um, if you are wondering what BookBub actually is, I did a video about it. I'll put the link right here. Um, but basically it's a site where you have discounted and free books from the major ebook sellers. Um, <clears throat> so the first book is Bridgers. Um, I don't know a lot about these books because they were free, which means that they aren't super popular in the, the zeitgeist of booktubers, but they look like stuff I would be interested in, so I took a flyer. So Bridgers is by Stan C. Smith, and it's about these agents who are trained to take people to alternate dimensions and kind of protect and guide them and then those people do research and alternate dimensions and they also use the alternate dimensions to have vacations so for example if somebody wanted to go to an alternate dimension to hunt dinosaurs then a bridger would go with them to protect them and make sure nothing happened to them in the alternate dimension um this is three of the Bridgers books in one box set. Um, like I said, it was free on BookBug, but it sounded interesting, so I figured I'd give it a try. <clears throat> the next um, books I got for free were the Sevenfold Sword Fantasy series. And this is a series by Jonathan Moeller. And this basically is, well, I guess the best thing I can do is read it. Ridmark Arbin is the Shield Knight, the defender of the realm of Andamain. The realm is at peace after a long and terrible war, but dark powers threaten other lands. And when a mad elven wizard comes to the High King's court, Ridmark finds himself fighting not only for his life, but for the lives of his family, for the quest of the Seven Swords has begun. So Lord of the Rings, the type of stuff, 
once again, sounded kind of interesting. It was free, four books in a uh, four book omnibus set. So I figured I'd give it a try. Next one is Aaron Hodges, Daughter of Fate. Um, this is the Knights of Alana first book. And basically what it's about is there's this uh, young girl who's, um, who, her name is Pella and her family basically is captured by these evil warriors and she runs off and escapes and she goes to find her uncle who is kind of a down on his luck um, ex-grizzled warrior and she tells him she needs help and then they form a bond it's kind of like I guess like a true grit if it was a fantasy tale and she learns to, to fight and you know he gets to redeem himself and yada 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 hijinks ensue once again sounded interesting it was free figured I'd give it a try next is by JJ Green Mission Improbable Carrie Hatcher Space Adventure number one this is kind of in the mold of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy it's in the future and Carrie Hatcher is kind of like um, uh, a task rabbity type of person. She's in the future. She doesn't have prospects. She's doing low level jobs and she applies to this job and through a clerical error the job actually thinks she qualifies and the job is transgalactic intercultural community crisis liaison officer and she doesn't have the qualifications for this job and it's a high stakes job and as she travels the universe trying to do the job she's not qualified for, hijinks ensue. Oh, uh, once again, sounded interesting. I absolutely love the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Although weirdly, now it's not as funny as it was when I read it early when I was younger. Um, but still, I it's a classic series, so I figured I'd give this a shot. And the last book I got from Amazon First Reads and it's the Elias Network and basically it's a story about this guy Caspian Anderson oh it's written by Simon Gervais it's about this guy Caspian Anderson who is a translator for United Nations but is actually an assassin and so the books of about one of his missions going sideways and he has to deal with some things and escape once again I don't know a ton about this book but it just the caption of it you know, sounded interesting. Caspian Anderson is a translator for the United Nations, or so he led everyone to believe. No one suspects that mild-mannered Caspian with his baggy clothes and sensible car is actually an elite assassin for the U.S. government, and that's just how he wants it. So, he's been hiding, living this double life, so I figured I'd give it a try and see how that turns out. So, those are all of the books I got for free in September. Um, once again, I strongly recommend BookBub if you want to see deep discounts from legitimate ebook websites, Amazon, Kobo, um, places like that. And like I said, almost every time they send me an email, they'll usually have a book that's just free. So the ones that interested me, I picked up. Next up is the books that I bought in September. I mean, books I bought. Um, this month based off of what I read last month so it's three books um, the first book is the uh, World of Warcraft Dragonflight Codex it's basically an illustrated primer on dragons in World of Warcraft and their history um, it's definitely the kind of book that you would want a color device for and more importantly it's a book that you would want a bigger screen so this is the kind of book that I would read I'm going to be reading on my iPad um, it's got lots of cool illustrations and is going to go through the history of dragons in World of Warcraft. So the next book is A Gilded Cage by Auburn Tempest and Michael Anderley. It's an urban fantasy about a woman who's a druid. I don't know a ton about the book, um, but I did read a an urban druid series by Kevin Hearn uh, and I really enjoyed that series so I'm just interested to see what this these writers take is on the druid in the modern day world so you know I will let you know once I read it my take on it 
but right now I don't know a ton about the book. I just kind of like the cover. Uh, I like urban fantasy and I enjoyed those books by Kevin Hearn uh, about uh, him being about his Druid character. So I figured I'd give it a flyer. The last book I bought this month was The Jen Falls in Love. This is a series of short stories about genies and this was recommended to me by a commenter who saw my reaction to The Jen and Nightingale's Eye by A.S. Byatt. Um, that was a series of fairy tales and the headline fairy tale was The Jen and Nightingale's Eye which they eventually made a movie out of. And so they heard, they saw my video about my reaction to that and they mentioned that I should try this book. So I'm going to read this and see. It's a bunch of short stories about genies. See what I like about it. So those were the three books that I bought this month. Um, I bought Dragonfly Codex, The Gilded Cage by Auburn Tempest and Michael Anderley, and The Gin Falls in Love, which is a series of short stories edited by Mavish Murad and Jared Shuring. So those were all the books that I bought. Now on to the books that I read. So the first book I read was um, Miss Moriarty, I presume, which, you know, my dog, my Lady Sherlock series. I read one of those every month. Um, this is the sixth in the series. I have two more to go. So that means that it'll take me, um, I should be caught up to the series by November. Uh, this book um, is about the it, this day Sherlock series is basically Moriarty comes to Sherlock and asks Sherlock to look into the whereabouts of Moriarty's daughter who he feels is in a commune against her will and so Lady Sherlock goes to this commune and she looks into what's going on there and you know, is his daughter really being held against her will or is she there on purpose and a whole bunch of things occur. This for me was the weakest of the Lady Sherlock books. I've loved all of them. This one, I really felt like Sherry Thomas didn't take advantage of the characters as much as she had in other books. I felt the relationship between uh, Lady Sherlock and her paramour, Lord Ingram, it just was a little, it's, it, it's no other way I can put it, it was just a little creepy. It just really didn't mesh the connection between them that I had loved from other books. This one just took to some weird lengths. And the story itself just seemed a little blah. And the, the, normally, one of my favorite parts of her books is the supporting characters that surround her, Miss Watson, her sister Olivia, uh, those kind of characters. I enjoy their tales and their story. This one just kind of felt almost phoned in. It was okay. So, you know, during these videos, I always rate the books. And this book, no other way I can put it, it gets a three for me. It was okay. But, you know, I wasn't like giggling or laughing or sometimes I, I read these books and I'll chuckle and I really enjoy them. This one was good. You know, it wasn't bad, but if I read this book only, I would be like, eh, I can read other stuff that's better. Next book is The Palace of Illusions by Chitra Banerjee Divakaruni. And a couple months ago, when I, when I initially bought this book, I knew it was an alternate take on a mythology, but I had never read the mythology, which was the Mahabharata. So a couple months ago, I read the Mahabharata. So I, at least when I read this book, I could kind of get a feeling for the alternate take. The Palace of Illusions is an alternate take of the Mahabharata because it's the story told from the eyes of the key female in the Mahabharata, which is the wife of the three here, the five heroes in the book. And her name is Drapati. Um, well, that's her original name. I'll just go with her, the name that she's first called. Her name changes um, as you go on in the book, but I'll just go with her original name, Drapati. And 
it's told from her point of view and what she's going through and how she's viewing everything. And it was really, really an excellent story to see it from her point of view. Um, this is a book I would have almost gave five stars. The only reason I didn't give it five stars is I feel like they didn't go deep enough into her point of view. There were a lot of things that they did where they kind of told the story and they found these devices so that she could see things that she normally wouldn't have seen that occurred in the actual Mahabharata, that she wouldn't have access to that information. And I felt, I understood why they did it, but I felt like her story was interesting enough that there was stuff they could have left out. But I understand that the Mahabharata is an incredibly important piece of mythology, and I feel like this person may have been worried that if they wrote this book and left some key moments out of that classic tale, then there would have been some pushback. And so she found a couple plot devices so that this person could see other things going on that were normally outside of the purview of a, of a wife in these times. But her story, her tale, how they did it, how uh, Chitra did it, I really enjoyed. I just felt like I just wish she had pushed a little bit more into the um, into Draupadi's character and not been so faithful to try and tell us about things that were occurring that she probably wouldn't have been aware of. Once again, the devices she used for that to happen were, were good. They weren't like silly and tacked on, but I felt like it would have been a better story if it had been more about her. And it wasn't kind of like a need to make sure that she hit some of the high points of the Mahabharata. Um, all that being said, like I said, I felt like this could have been a five star book. But I'm going to give it four stars. I would also note that before you read this book, I would strongly recommend that you read the Mahabharata in some form. Uh, I'm going to list, uh, put on the screen, uh, two versions of the Mahabharata that I would recommend if you don't feel like diving into, you know, over 1500 pages of stuff. Um, the version that I read was two volume, 1500 pages, but they have a shortened version by Penguin Press that I'm putting up also that is roughly around 300 pages and does a good job of kind of fleshing over everything. So I put those two up on the screen um, in case you want to uh, jot those down and get one of those books. But I would strongly recommend you're at least familiar with the classic Mahabharata story before you dive into Palace of Illusions. The next book is Cursed Cocktails by S.L. Rowland. I knew this was a cozy fantasy. It literally says a cozy fantasy. And when I first bought this book, I bought it to kind of see what it was about, but I kind of had a bone to pick with it because I love Legends and Lattes, which is the cozy fantasy that really started people talking about cozy fantasies so much that this book just felt like a blatant knockoff. And when I started to read it, it is kind of a knockoff, but it's kind of a knockoff the way eating lasagna, eating two different types of lasagna is a knockoff. That, in other words, it has all the core ingredients that I loved about Legends and Lattes. The story was different enough that I was able to enjoy it on its own. I have to admit, I was really surprised by how much I liked this book. And this story basically is about a retired blood mage. And in this world, blood mages are these magicians who use blood, they control blood, but in doing that, it takes a toll on their bodies. And this person retired from being a blood mage because there reaches a point where you just kind of have to quit. It takes too much of a toll on your body. So they either retire or die. And this person retires and they go to warmer climes and they basically open a bar. Now, if you read Legends and Lattes, you know, done right, it is a lot more involved than just opening a bar. 
I really enjoyed this book. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed this book. Legends and Lattes got a five star because it just stunned me by a, a book just being about people and relationships and procedure, how much they could get out of that. And I feel the same with Cursed Cocktails. Because I love Legends and Lattes so much, I wanted to say, look, I can't give it five stars, but this was a five star book. I really, really enjoyed it. I will definitely be reading the other books in the series. Um, but yeah, it was derivative, but that's kind of like saying Rocky Five, Rocky Six, and Rocky Seven were derivative. Eh, they probably were, but a good thing done well is a good thing. So I give five stars for that. The next book I read was uh, Tammy Painter, The Great Escape. It's uh, 15 Tales of Humor, Myth, and Magic. And this was basically the writer Tammy Painter, just 15 short stories that she wrote. I got this book um, for free months ago because I had read, um, she did kind of an alternate take on classic Roman classic Roman and Greek mythology and she did the story of Hercules I, I've talked about I read it I guess I, that was one of the first books I read when I started this channel maybe back in January or February I'll put the link up and I liked that book and because I liked that book I was curious about what else she had I went to her website because for me one thing I've quickly learned is I use Amazon to find books but once I see a book on Amazon I will generally check the publisher and go to the publisher's website to see if I can get the book without digital rights meet without um, DRM or anti-piracy or I'll go to the author's website to see if they're selling the book um, without anti-piracy so anyway I went to her book and she was giving this book away for free it's a good book but I, I, I can't say it's a great book because a lot of these short stories were kind of her formative tales, they weren't really complete. They were more like, this is a book full of her exercises in her art. And so some are nice, some are good, but some are just misses. And it's really more about reading kind of an artist's process and how they're forming their stories into different genres. I couldn't, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you had this book and you read it, it's not that bad. It's just, as I always say about books that I rate three stars, there are better books out there. And as far as a book full of short stories goes, um, wasn't bad. I got it for free, but it's not something that I would recommend to somebody. So this gets three stars. Next book I read was the uh, Judge Dredd Omnibus, which is basically Judge Dredd in his third year and his three sto short stories by Michael Carroll, Matt Smith, and Laurel Sills. This was an excellent book. All three short stories were very good, very much indicative of a young Judge Dredd, and you can kind of see how everybody sees him as he's, you know, becoming a force in the in the police force and it also kind of shows his personality I'm a big fan of Judge Dredd books um, especially when they're 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 done with good supporting characters in the book uh, this is a book I would recommend to somebody but I would recommend this book but I would strongly recommend the omnibus Judge Dredd year one first so that person can kind of get all that information in there then judge dread year two and then this omnibus um excellent book i would recommend but since i would recommend the first two books you know i would say get that those first if you're interested in this in these uh, judge dread early year books this was a very good book going for four stars on this And the last book I read in September was uh, 
Clive Cussler Pacific Vortex. Uh, this book teetered between two and three for me. Um, this book is about uh, Dirk Pitt and the, Dirk Pitt is basically kind of a bargain basement James Bond type character. You know, one of those guys who's overtly macho, mildly misogynistic, and the women who try to kill him 10 minutes later fall in love with him. One of those kind of guys. So that's something you're going to be into or not into. When it's done in this kind of high macho way, I'm not super into it. And to be honest, when I first started reading this book, I was just like, eh, this guy, you know, is just a James Bond knockoff. And there's nothing about him that is bringing me into his story. It's just kind of a paint by numbers, a macho action hero person. You know, he's an ex Navy. I mean, he was in the Air Force. And, you know, he's women are after him. And, all the vixens and everybody's like, oh, he's he doesn't take any stuff. It was just kind of, I kind of feel like one of those hyper macho things. And obviously, it's a book of his time. This was, I believe, uh, written in 1979. But what made me eventually move it up to a three is I did kind of enjoy the story, which is basically a nuclear submarine has gone missing in this mysterious area of the Pacific called the Pacific Vortex and the story is about going to find that ship what happened to that ship and getting that ship back and that stuff actually was interesting enough to me that I was like okay this is pretty good not a four star um, there are books there are three star books I often call airport books which is if you were stuck in an airport for 10 hours and you didn't have any books to read, read, and you went into their gift shop, and this book was here, you'd be happy you picked it up because it, you read it. It helped you pass some time, and it was not bad. But it's not a book that you would go to a bookstore and look for and pick up. So, um, obviously, this is the first book in a series of books by Dirk Pitt. I don't really see myself reading the other books in his in the series. This was enough Dirk Pitt for me. I just feel, once again, there are better books than this. There's your Born Identities. There is, of course, the James Bond books. You know, there is other books of this type of character that are done better. And this just kind of feels like somebody, like Clive Custer, was kind of taking advantage of the moment in time to write a book that would be the next action hero. So this book, once again, the, the procedure of what they were doing once they started looking for a submarine was interesting to me. So that brings it up to a three. The character itself is an absolute two, but that brought it up for me to for a three. So that was my book life in September. Uh, the books I got for free, the books I bought, and also the books I read. Hi, this is really more of a PS. Um, this is to briefly talk about a Audible book that I listen to. Um, I don't count Audible books in the books that I read for the month because, well, I didn't read it. I listened to it. I listen to about two or three Audible books a month. I just don't count them because they're not books I read and my whole reading experience as a digital reader in this vi in this um, YouTube channel is about books I'm reading and keeping my reading skills sharp. Um, if there are audio books, usually I listen to audio books that are books where they're not really deep. They may not be super interesting, but I just really, really like the voice narrator and the way they tell a story. So I kind of treat them more like listening to music. All that to be said, um, this book was recommended to me because I had did a video on uh, Gentleman Rogue books that I would recommend. I'll uh, put that video up here. 
and so somebody recommended this book to me, Just Watch Me by Jeff Lindsay. Um, this book is basically about a, um, a burglar, uh, a master burglar, and this master burglar feels that they're not challenged anymore, and so they try and find this incredibly um, hard theft that they're going to do, and what they're going to do is they're going to basically steal some nation's national treasures diamond, the biggest diamond that they have, and all the stuff that goes on during that theft. The story itself um, is okay. Um, my biggest issue with Just Watch Me from my framework of loving gentleman rogue books is this guy, in my opinion, is not a gentleman rogue. He's just a straight up thief. And as you read this book, you when you read the book in the beginning you're like oh he's a gentleman rogue and then as you kind of hit the middle of the book you're like oh no he's not and some of the stuff whenever i read caper books i always like to feel like the good caper books make you feel like yeah i probably would have fell for that i feel like reading this book i was just kind of like some of the stuff that he's doing just doesn't really line up and I don't think I would have fell for that and when you're in a reading a caper book and you're kind of like I don't think I would have fell for that then the book starts to fall a little flat um, I just wasn't a huge fan of his character I wasn't a huge fan of the characters around him they weren't bad but they were kind of um, this reminded me a lot more of like a movie or TV series in the depth that it went into what was going on with the characters in the book and the motivations and everything. I mean, when you're doing a book about something, you have so much time to really get into things. And I felt this was a little bit more on the surface. I think if I wasn't stuck in the gentleman rogue mindset, I might have liked this book more. So I can't say it definitely wasn't a bad book. But I would say for me, it was an okay book. And because of the character that he is, I would read more because he just isn't a character that I personally root for. But I would say it wasn't a bad book. So if this was a book that I was rating, I would have given it three stars. So I guess I'll see you next month about what I did in October. This is Ofori, the digital reader, and keep reading.